We're getting to authentication in Liferay. We have done all of our clustering, setting up, everything is running, and now what? We have some users that actually want to use our system. With Liferay, that's quite easy because during the setup time, you will specify this is my administrative user, this is the password, and well, maybe all of the rest of the setup. Yes, I'm accepting the terms and conditions if you have configured them to be required to be set up. Well, quite often we have customers who already have an idea of who their users are. Let's say you're running an intranet. Most likely you have an LDAP directory somewhere which has all of your employees. Should you replicate all of that? Well, guess what? The answer is no, of course. We'll integrate with whatever solution you have. If it's an LDAP server, I'm not quite aware if anybody has anything else but an LDAP server to, uh, to store all of their user data. So they will be able to just sign up. Now, how does that work? This is exactly what we discuss in this chapter. First headline, integrating LDAP and SSO. However, that will spread over several chapters. So we'll start with the two, with LDAP and SSO, as we have it here. LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, doesn't really help the acronym. Uh, it doesn't really help to know what the acronym actually stands for. SSO is a little bit simpler. Single sign-on means you got to configure something that takes your username and password or your chip card or whatever way of authentication you prefer and you demand and provides your identity to whatever system is there uh, behind this single sign-on system. Now, single sign-on, as they say, describe a number of services which enable users to manage sign-ons to multiple sites or services using only one account, meaning you sign in once in the morning and whatever system you then access just will access the single sign-on system and have your identity properly uh, asserted. Which means also that a system like Liferay is not even uh, or does not even know your password, which is a good thing. We have a number of different SSO solutions that we are integrating with, and that is what we'll cover in a later chapter. And quite often, I would say, in all of the systems that I have seen, whenever single sign-on is involved, there is an LDAP involved as well, because after all, single sign-on requires to get access to the user data. Liferay requires access to the user data as well, because it needs to know not only who you are, but some other details about you. So both of them typically just access the same LDAP server anyways. And uh, well, that's what we're going to look at. We're actually not going to set up a single sign-on system today, but we're talking about the principles that we can uh, have there. However, we are going to set up an LDAP server and that will also be quite simple. In the authentication, let's go without single sign-on first. In the authentication that we, uh, that we uh, implement or that we just use within Liferay, basic information, you are always signed in as some user. In the most trivial case, the user is called guest, and that's the user that doesn't need a password because they just access the system anyways. And guest is the unprivileged user, Quite easy. There's also a role in Liferay that's called guest with, with which you can configure what this unprivileged user or unauthenticated user has access to. This is typically all the public data uh, and once you want to, once you either access a protected resource, Liferay will redirect you to the sign-in mask, typically within Liferay containing the username and password field or to the external sign-in, uh, the single sign-on system. Now, if you either click on sign in or uh, if you are redirected to this sign in page because you access a protected resource, then Liferay will sign you in. Well, sign you in means it asks for your username and password. Username by default is the email address and uh, your password. 
It will basically access the hashed password it has in the database and compare, sign you in or not if it's wrong. Now, this is one thing. Then we have LDAP. Uh, well, actually, this is uh, the case with the Liferay-centric sign-in only. It can be the case with LDAP, but I have never seen that with LDAP. So password compare with LDAP is possible, but I've never seen that being legal in any organization. So yes, we can do that, but no, it's against the policy of any customer that I have seen. When we have an, uh, a single sign-on integration running, then LifeRate does not redirect you to its username and password input field, but it just redirects you to whatever resource is configured as the single sign-on system's sign-up mask. What that asks for, if that is a username and password, if that is the presence of a chip card, if that is uh, whatever, an, an, a dongle with a, a changing code number, I don't know, I don't care. In the end, the single sign-on system will determine what your identity is and communicate that identity to Liferay. That can be through a request, that can be through a request header, or that can be through a cookie or whatever measure is available. Some of them are encrypted or signed. Some of them are not because it's just a request header. That depends on the single sign-on system that you actually use. One detailed, slightly different way is we have a remember me option in Liferay, which will basically also continue to sign you up. It will encrypt your identity in a cookie somewhere and reserve this cookie, this encrypted password cookie, every time you come back and be able to sign you in through exactly the same mechanism as before, just without you seeing the username and password. So if you enable this Remember Me checkbox, uh, this is what you get. Now, speaking of LDAP, I already mentioned that there is a configuration that I see with customers and there is a configuration that I never see with customers. When you are using LDAP configuration, you'll have the bind method, which means Liferay gets your username and password and then binds to LDAP. And LDAP does all of the hashing and comparison or storing your password in plain text or whatever, but that's out of the realm of Liferay. And, well, Liferay will need your password. The other one, password compare, would mean Liferay asks the LDAP server, can you please give me the hashed password for this user? Or even worse, can you please give me the clear text password for this user? Well, that's possible, but according to the policy of all of the customers that I've seen, that's just something that the LDAP server will refuse to answer. So we're stuck with a bind method, which is not the worst anyways. Uh, we'll get to exactly this in performance tuning as well. Just because of the way passwords are hashed, we can actually accelerate Liferay quite a bit by uh, exten externalizing password hashing and password operations to the LDAP server or to the single sign-on system. It says bind is preferred. I would say bind is the only option that I ever saw, so don't bother with that. Quite a simple, simple introduction. So we're speaking of single sign-on for a number of services uh, that we're going to cover in one of the next chapters in, uh, in detail. We're covering LDAP. It says one of the most popular SSO solutions. I don't really agree with the SSO in here because LDAP is basically just a storage of user names, password, uh, group data, uh, permissions, and so on. Uh, but it is a single storage of all of your passwords and uh, identity information. And uh, we can basically use uh, LDAP authentication. And we didn't yet speak about the user import and export, but we'll do that in the next chapter coming up 